There you go. Start. All right. Um, so like I was saying, there's a lot of different topics, obviously, because this is sort of a catch-all. But um, the two things I I basically just use the 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 the, the tidyverse version of the the code to show to sort of illustrate some stuff. Um, so hopefully we'll get to the end of the hour, but I don't know. Um, so yeah, so basically I just focused on kind of this, the instrumental variable idea, and then also on this idea of regression discontinuity. Okay. Um, that was you know, and even that I'm probably not getting that far. So. Um, I think you talked about ignorability in the last chapter, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. the last two chapters, I think. The ignorability last two chapters. Chapter. So this idea of ignorability the... is, um, <clears throat> um, you know, that the that the um, the outcomes are are independent of the treatment, right? So, right. or um, conditionally, what's that? Or conditional on something, or right? Conditional, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. And then they also kind of pointed out, like in the chapter, that you know, that if we if we have all of the confounders measured and, and accounted for, then you know, we should be confident. But there was a sentence in there that I like that was, you know, when we when are we really confident right. in all that we measured? So anyway, so if the ignorability of the treatment assignment is not supportable, there may be other variables that appear to be randomly assigned or can be considered as such. But this variable is called the instrument or I, which is predictive of the treatment. And then we may have to use it to isolate a particular kind of targeted causal estimate. Um, uh, the instrument should only affect the treatment assignment and have no direct effect on the outcome. So I guess that's sort of the, the, the uh, and I've seen sort of similar definitions in my readings over the years. I, I, I don't, I've never really done much with instrumental variables. I don't know about you. I've heard about the plot, so I'm actually kind of like interested. But yeah, it's at the end of this book, it's kind of a lot to, <laughs> to get into as a topic. But yeah, so basically, it's you know it should affect the the, the treatment or the the predictor, but not the actual outcome. Um, so one of the things that they, that they use is our our our, our favorite uh, Sesame Street. Uh, uh, well, I guess what's I, we, I don't know if we've done Sesame Street, but we've done um, Electric Company, right? And so what they talk about this, you know, um, RCT or this this the, kind of to show the effects of watching Sesame Street on, um, I think the outcome was some kind of standardized test in reading or math or something like that. Um, so you can't really experimentally force kids to watch Sesame Street or to not watch Sesame Street. So they can't really, you can't really randomize that. But what you can do is randomize who gets encouraged to watch, right? Mm -hmm. So this idea of encouragement is um, sometimes referred to as a randomized encouraged, encouragement um, um, design. And so the encouragement is an example of what's called an intent to treat effect, which, you know, basically is, you know, Regardless of what happens, the intent was, you know, to get the kids to, um, you know, want to to watch this 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 intervention, right? Um, so basically, and then the, then they also talk about, you know, in, so encouragement is this thing that you know hopefully um, predicts watching, but doesn't influence the outcome. Then they also talk about, you know, you have a couple of different outcomes, right? So the main outcome is their scores on these um, these standardized tests, right? Right. Um, but another way you can look at it as a potential intermediate outcome is compliance. Like, you know, how many kids are actually watching the dang show, right? Um, yeah, so for to do this type of analysis, those children whose viewing patterns could be altered by encouragement are the only participants in the study for whom the design provides information on counterfactuals. With regard to viewing behavior, since under different experimental conditions, they might have been observed either viewing or not viewing. I read that sentence like a bunch. <laughs> yeah, I remember that sentence. I remember that too. I'm like, what? I'm still struggling, man. Um, so anyway, I think the point is, is um, you know, it's the kids that, you know, that we, we, we think could be possibly be altered by encouragement, right? So these are the only children for whom we can make um, inferences about the effect right. of watching Sesame Street and the local average treatment effect for them is referred to as the co complier average causal effect. Okay, 
so yeah I was definitely this this was the part that I really struggled with just trying to like I read it and reread it and um yeah I'm, I'm I, I do this for a living and even I'm like struggling with this yeah I, I so this whole chapter was a struggle for me because I'm like wait how do you know if a child is a complier or not I mean I know it's all about counterfactuals and it's all yeah. about like you know being close you know near to like a cutoff or near you know whatever right. so we knew that children um who were encouraged to watch but did not we might plausibly assume that these children also would um would not have watched if not encouraged right so a child who would not watch regardless of the assignment we would be is labeled a never taker we cannot directly estimate the effect of viewing of the for these children since in this context they never um would be observed watching the show I right. um so then similarly for the children who watch sesame street even though not encouraged we might plausibly assume that they um if they had been encouraged they would not have watched as well i don't know they why. would have watched would have watched would have sorry would have watched sorry uh, again uh, these children can't shed light on the okay so anyway so um and they, these are kids that are called always takers i guess um so yeah i <laughs> i get i guess i get it right so we don't care about the always takers or the defiers um or even um well the defiers are the big problem right because you kind of have to assume they don't exist or something is that what you're saying i feel i think i remember saying yeah the, one of the assumptions is you have to assume that the defiers are yeah i guess this because nothing you can do about that i don't know yeah so I, i'm i i feel like i failed in this chapter a little bit i Ready no, you're doing great. I mean, this is just one of those. This is a tough chapter, man. It's a tough chapter. Yeah. Um, okay. So then the assumptions. I guess there's basically the second to last chapter, and it's the last chapter that's really meaty. And, and uh, I feel yeah, like yeah, it, this, this just feels like a step too far for this late in the book. But yeah, so I feel yeah, like that, 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 you know. To be fair though, like I did, I, I, did I did go on Amazon and buy a couple of books on causal inference. So I well, guess you it, should post what you what you bought. I mean, or any of the ones you like, anyway. Yeah, well, one of them has R code in it, so I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't care yeah. if R code or not, but yeah. Well, I kind of, I mean, I like those. I, I I tend to like those just because they have things we can work through right. on in code. All right. So, what are some of the key assumptions sure. um, for estimating instrumental variables? So, the instrument, uh, the ignorability of the instrument. So, the extent to which um, the assumption um, that this assumption is difficult to justify any advantage over um traditional observational study so basically um you know um what we're saying here is we, we feel strongly that the instrument has no impact on the outcome right but it can right. influence the um the uh the, the, the treatment uh monotonicity um that's when you assume there's no defiers right right yes yeah, so we assume there's no defiers so and defining never takers and always takers, assume that there were no children who would have watched if not encouraged, but right. would not have watched if they were encouraged. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so they're just yeah, doing. You basically say there's no kids like, oh, they, well, do you want me to watch this tree? Well, I was watching. Now I'm definitely not. You know, the, you know, what, you know what really, the, you know what really would be better is instead of calling them the fires, just call them. The, you're not the boss of me. You yeah, know? exactly. You're, you're not the boss of me, kids, right? <laughs> So if they're teenagers, you're probably screwed. They'll, they'll probably they'll be a lot of defiers. all defiers, every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no yeah, I guess here's another thing. So non-zero association. Okay, yeah, that makes sense because we want the instrument mental variable to you know to to influence or to predict or to right. have some relationship association. Yeah, it has to be, otherwise it's useless. Yeah, right? what's the point, right? I mean, if I just um, if, I gave, if I gave all the kids red crayons. And the other kids yellow crayons it's not going to have any impact on their i can't use this as an instrument because they have no impact on their assessment street washing right right yeah so the exclusion restriction to estimate the effect of, of viewing for those kids whose viewing behaviors would have been affected by the encouragement we must make another important assumption okay this assumption says that for children who Actually, behavior... I, I wonder if i could just ask a question like a fundamental question for go too far i just don't understand what the purpose of the instrument is and if we know that they watched or not i thought the instrument is more useful when you just don't have actually don't you don't observe that they actually watch and all you know is you encourage them right yeah i to, guess it's true i he mean seems i guess to assume that you have access to whether they watched or not because he says oh you can directly check the association right uh, check from the data well if i have the data on who watched then what do i need the instrument for i don't I understand that just well here's that. why okay so like when you so i think one of the things that makes it hard is everything that we're looking at is in the past right so i mean like they've already done all of this so you have to imagine you're at the start of the study right Right. And so, since so since you can't like I mean you can't really randomly assign people 
I mean, you, I guess, you know, to, you, you, I mean, I, you, you, you could, but right. So the point is, is you can't force, it's like, um, you know, like, you know, the, 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 Oh, it has to do with the, it has to do with the random assignment or whatever. It has to be, has to do yeah. with the, uh, with the ignorability. No, I, I remember now the ignore, you can't, the, um, the actual outcomes are not, you can't use because they're not, they don't satisfy ignorability, but the, the, um, instrument variable does because you can randomly assign that that's what the issue right is. so and so then yeah i mean so even though like oh, the, tre goodness. the treatment is actually watching sesame street but really for us it's it's an it's an intermediate outcome right okay i got you right and so we can't ability right yeah yeah okay and so then yeah the the, the first the thing they're looking at this data oh yeah there's a very almost the first sentence for uh, first sentence in 21.1 says in some situations the argument for normally in the treatment cannot be is weak that's the whole purpose. I somehow missed that whole thread through something. I'm like, why are we doing this? <laughs> I don't know. Tell me about it. Okay, now I get it. Sort of. I don't get it, get it, but I yeah. I so yeah believe it. me. You're, you're yeah, yeah. you got good company. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, these are the number of kids that were encouraged but didn't watch, the number of kids that were not encouraged but did watch. So I guess these would be the um what what do we call them again? I don't even remember. Um always takers. Always takers, right? Yes. And then these were never takers, I guess. And then these are obviously, this is the, the group that we're most interested in. So right? just to, to hammer this in. So the assumption of monotonicity, mon yeah, Monoton monotonicity, I believe. Is monotonicity yeah. is that these one zero guys, for example, are never watchers. They're not defiers, right? We're assuming mm -hmm. that they would have never watched it. Not the case that our encouragement caused them not to watch, right? That's right. That's, now I understand that assumption a little deeper now, because otherwise those would be in there. The fires would be right in there with the never takers. You'd never be able to disentangle them. Right. That's a good point. So anyway, without any encouragement, about 55% of kids still watched Sesame Street, right? That's um, that's what we get 48, here. Yeah. Okay. So with encouragement, that, 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 that increased to 91, which is here. So we now calculate the estimate of the effect of watching Sesame Street for the kids who received encouragement and who in turn actually watched the show. So that's the 138 here, right? So yeah, so so now we're just gonna look at this intermediate outcome, right? Which is did they watch or not? And then uh, using encouragement, that a random assignment as a yeah. So so the estimand of um wait a minute. Oh, yeah. So the estimate of encourage is simply the difference in the proportion of children who watch Sesame Street when encouraged versus when not encouraged. Right. So that's just. Um, yeah, that's that's how we get that. Right. right? So it's so 36 percent. Right. Same as yeah, from the fit. Yeah. OK. When we compute the intended treat estimate obtained in this case using regression of the outcome, the post treatments. Um, so it's a letter recognition task. Right. That's that's. Right. Fairly, it's like an intention and sort of like linguistic test, kind of. I think. Um, oh, I don't know why. I just okay, good. So, um, the estimated coefficient of encouragement in this regression is is two point nine. So, uh, so then we can inflate that by the by dividing by the percentage of children affected by the intervention. Right. So this is what's called a Walden's um, estimate. Right. So, um, yeah, what's so, yeah, the difference here is because so the postlet is the actual, um, the actual outcome, right? And so, but uh, watched is that intermediate outcome. So, I guess what we're doing here is taking the coefficient of the effects of encouragement on the ultimate outcome and dividing it by, um, the effects of encouragement on watching. Does that make sense? Kind of. I mean, that's they didn't really say much about this, right? But so that's. Do you see what I'm saying here? So so fit at one A is the outcome is, um, watching is the outcome, right? right? And then fit one B is the postlet. That's just that's just it. Just change that number in your mind to like standardized test, right? right Which right, is right, right. like a letter recognition task. Yeah. So, so thirty six percent of the kids that were encouraged watched. Mm -hmm. And what was the um 
And so kind of dividing by that percentage in some way to get this walled estimate from the slope of the post slit versus encouraged. Yeah. Why are we doing that though? What the percentage of children affected by the yes, percentage of children affected by the intervention. Okay. Okay. Why do we want to inflate that? I just don't get that at all. What's what's yeah, what well, I guess I guess what it is is we're 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 making the effect of the um the coefficient in the situation where we're just looking at um the effects of encouragement on watching, right? On so, encouraged, right? I get it now, right? So this is the C A C E thing, right? I think so, kind yeah. of. Yeah, that's the wall decimate is the same as that, I think, isn't it? Yeah, but you notice, like in the part of the book, they just say, well, this is what the wall decimate is, and they kind of just move on. So yeah, they don't, don't talk much about it. They don't talk about it. So that's one that's kind of frustrating, but whatever. Okay, so now um, I'm going to talk about like another way of doing this in a regression framework. There's what's called the two stage least squares. So um, it's a little bit like what we just kind of showed up above, right? So with 1A, we had the effects of encouragement on watching, right? Um, so yeah, we get, um, we get predicted values for this. And then what we do is we add, um, the predicted values for the, from, for watching, for having watched onto the data set. And then we regress this. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the predicted sc scores in the model from um, the model where we're using encouragement to predict watching. And now we're saying, okay, this is the, the effects of encouragement on watching. How does right. that predict their scores, right? Okay. And so, yeah, by the way, notice how this is um, the same as the wall decimal. Right, right. Like, yeah, interesting. So watch predicted, okay. Sorry, where did I, I lost my spot here. Um, Oh, okay, right, right. is the effect of watching Seth Street, Street on letter recognition. The coefficient. What is watch predict two A again? I'm sorry, that's the. So watched um, predict two A is basically it's the effect of encouragement on watching. But it's a it's not the actual it's not the actual whether they watch or not. It's a prediction if they would have watched. I guess or the, the based on the probability they would have watched or something. I don't know what it is, but. Well, no, it's, so it's a linear model, right? right? And so this is, so it's basically just- Shouldn't like, it be like a logistic model? That's, that's weird, but anyway. Yeah, it's a good, well, it's a good point. Wash is like zero or one, right? So I'm, I Yeah, no, I know. It's, an, it's actually, yeah, I didn't think about that. Well, it's a good point. Because isn't wash possibly going to be like more than one? I, anyway. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I was really like, what is I, what does watch pred two A look like? I mean, can we do a histogram of that or something? I'm just curious. Oh uh, well, here's here's what we have uh, for the the predicted values for this. We have this, oh. but we could do. No, that's uh, good. That summary is good. So the mean. So it it looks like it it doesn't in this particular case it doesn't get too far out of, out of range. It's like between you know those third quantiles point nine and one. So. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah five, four, in six, the minimum, it's, it's, it's about point five. So oh, the max. So it's in range. So it's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, here the question is, is, is the effect of watching Sesame Street on letter recognition for those children who would watch if encouraged, but not otherwise? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this, but this doesn't give us the correct standard errors, but which we'll discover. Well. So, okay. So, um, so now we've done uh, that. But now it's like, you know, like most things that we do, it's like, okay, how can we control for more covariates or any covariates in this case, right? So now we're gonna have the same thing as we had before in 2A, but we're gonna add their pretest on the um, standardized letter recognition. Also, like, I guess there was like different sites. And then I forget about the settings. Maybe it's like, I forget whether it was like classroom. I forget too. Yeah, so anyway, I forget this, you know, but anyway, there was, there's obviously five sites and so now remember the um the effect for 2a was sorry uh encouraged it's 0.36 it's a little bit lower yeah and so now we're going to do the same thing again we're going to make right um, do the prediction we're take, and so this actually is interesting look at this Ah, see, he goes above one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that works. Then he has like, what? Well, how do you how do you have above one if one is, you know, 
Uh, well, I guess it, maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. I, I, I would think I a logistic know. regression would be used. But since we're not, this is only an intermediate kind of thing, it doesn't mean it doesn't matter. You're not actually using yeah. it. Yeah. Who knows? All right. So now we're doing the same thing again. But remember, we've added these three covariates as ways of you know controlling for this type of stuff. So um, the estimated effect of watching uh, Sesame Street on on the compi comply or I, I keep wanting to say compiling because you know it's like a computer thing uh, right. is about blah 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 points so um yeah it's yeah I guess it would be 14 points right yeah so um but once again we can't trust the standard error okay so standard errors in for um in the instrumental variable estimates we know we, we show here how to adjust standard errors um, to account for uncertainty in both stages. So we take the residuals and uh, the model matrix. And yeah, I don't I don't fully understand all that's going on here. I didn't I, I didn't actually look at this very much. I just used the code. Um, yeah, I would be too. I kind of breeze through this like, all right, so you got to correct for the errors somehow, fine. Right. He, he bree to be fair, he breathes through it too. I mean, he, he really does. Yeah. So I guess what we're doing is we're, we're like, um, yeah, I don't even know. I, I, to be honest, I just, I couldn't, um, get more into this. So it's basically, this is, so this is the, um, At this point, I'm not sure I'd even trust all this. I probably want to use some. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, man. I mean, it's yeah. Okay. So basically this is what the new standard errors are. This is what they were. So it's, you know, it's somewhat different. Oh, and then, um, um, oh, this. I'd probably know. do some kind of bootstrapping or something. I don't know. Right. I feel like. So now we're using B. I think you actually wrote me a message and I didn't respond to this about BRMS. Maybe there is some kind of an issue. I don't know what's the package. Well, for whatever reason on mine, on Windows, it, it, it crapped out on me like a bunch of errors. And I read, you know, I, it was like very fragile. I, Checked a bunch of websites. One website says, "Oh, go to this other place." There's some goop, you know, yeah. threads on it. So I finally found out you had to use some. Uh, um, I actually forgot what the problem was. You had to do something. <laughs> I forgot what it was. Yeah. Oh, you had to use like a different version of R stand or something. Huh. Wow, I vaguely remember what the what the solution was. Now, does it work for you though? Well, I'm running. It's running right now. I mean, so like yeah, it's slow. Can, it's not fast. It's really not fast, but um. Yeah, there's something that you had to like install a different version of the R, uh, R stand thing. Yeah, I'll give this a little more time, but uh, it, the it, bleeding it, edge version of it or something. It, it, it uh, we, we can always just skip this. It's not really like, I don't know, the, I, I, my recollection, this worked at one point. I do yeah, remember. It, 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 it would have failed already if it was going to fail. It just takes, it takes a minute. Yeah, so here's, here's what's interesting. If you see this formula, so basically we're just kind of like putting the two equations into a, like, yeah. So that's so that's pretty cool, right? That's that seems like it would be worth the extra effort. And so it's just kind of taking out that 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 second stage, or just kind of wrapping it into right. the the first modeling. Yeah. Um. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you have to use the preview of the next R stand version or something on my on my Windows machine. That's what I had to get to work, but it failed like right away when I did. I have no idea why. Right. Hold on one second. I'm gonna I'm gonna um try one thing. And that was a year old thread too, and it but it seems like they should fix it by now. Who knows? Right. Um it's yeah, it's still it is still um running, so You, you can see my screen again, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just sitting there cranking. All right, so let's just give it another minute, but then if not, I'll just, it's like I said, I think it's just, it's basically, you know, running the same thing and then. Right. Yeah, I don't know what happens here. All right, well, how about this? Well, we'll just move on. I mean, yeah, that's fine. I, mean, I, uh, and then, I ran and then, it before. I know what it does. So you know what it does, and yeah, that's fine. Okay, so this regression discontinuity, I know well a little bit more about it, but not a ton because uh, well, I've done something called a difference in difference analysis. So I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's like it's kind of a more complicated no. version of this. Um, 
Yeah. So basically like a regression discontinuity situation is um so we have um you know sorry i didn't get all my information in here so basically we can't really kind of make the assumption of ignorability right so we're going to use this um chili data set where if my recollection is correct you know we're talking about like schools where um they're trying to figure out like which actually hold on let me just double check this and um make sure i okay yeah so uh Okay, so the Chilean government introduced 900 schools with P900 in 1990 in an effort to increase performance in serving public schools by providing resources in four different areas. So they had different areas in different years that were sort of um, in an effort to target the needy of schools, provided these resources only to the schools who, whose mean fourth grade test scores uh, were lower than a set cutoff, right? So this is where the kind of the discontinuity takes place is where does that cut off, right? Right. So um here we have you know these are all the, the the schools that are not um uh eligible and then these are the 572 are eligible so the first thing we, we would do is so this so this rule um two is sort of like whether they're um eligible or not so if it's greater if it's um wait a minute yeah, if it's less than zero, then that means that they are eligible, right? So uh, we're, we're, we're including both that rule cutoff and the eligibility status. And we get um, this, right? So we have, you know, uh, a decent effect for the eligibility, but the, you know, the rule is, is, is about half of that, right? And so, um, the intent to treat effect, which looks at all of the data, kind of shows us this. This is pretty cool. I, I, I didn't make this was I you know made this up. But that yeah. little gap between the left line and the right, that's the discontinuity, right? So um yeah, so this is that, you know, this is the assignment, this is that rule two thing. And then this is the, the group that's eligible, and this is the group that is right. So you can see this that we get this bump up um right so um okay and then um now what, did, what oh yeah this is why did we I forget why did we do this okay so this is yeah so this is now data that's only okay right okay i remember now so this is data that's only um within five points of that cutoff so just to be clear so it's like basically this area here if you can see where i might kind of yes yeah yeah back and forth so, so now we're only looking at those people and the effects of just to remember here so eligibility was 1.5 rule two was 0.7 right so now we've got um you know a little bit more because we're only looking at kind of really related things um so the coefficient of rule two is the slope of the line and the estimated uh, effect of eligibility um for the p900 is a two, which corresponds to the discontinuity at the cutoff right um so the intent to treat for um exposure to p90 on schools is so this so now uh this you'll notice how it, it, we're like more in focus i guess you could say because this is only you know, if you look at the x-axis here, it's we're only looking at five, you know, negative five to five, right? So we've eliminated all of those um ones that are really far out that yeah, you know, far out that aren't really worth considering, right? So now we're doing a couple other things. We're we're saying, okay, you keeping what we already had, and now we're using their pre-existing scores and in, in the schools um as, as covariates, right? Or pre-treatment variables. So now, oh, you can see how we've kind of flattened everything out because we're, you know, we're adjusting for those pre-existing or the pre-treatment, you know, differences, I guess you could say. Um, 
Yeah. So then, oh yeah. And then, and this is actually something they don't do in the book. This is like the guy he's like, this is actually, he actually had it even more focused in this plot is dip. This is his writing or her writing. I don't know who okay. it is. This plot is different from the one in the book. The adjustment above only uses the data near the cutoff that is used in the model. The plot in the book adjusts for using all the data. Okay. And then like the last thing he tries to do um, is like do some interactions. So now we're looking at eligibility by like their reading scores, I guess, interact. So it's like, is there is there a special effect for say having high reading pre pretest or low pretest reading scores and being eligible? Is there some kind of extra sort of umph? Right. right? So um, you'll notice that because of like one of the things that I guess he points out is is these uh, standard errors are pretty big. Um, and so he says, basically, uh, in, the, in this case, the available data was clearly too noisy to estimate this interaction. So anyway, this was like kind of a thing that the um, this the, this code author kind of did to um, kind of show that. Um, yeah. And so anyway, so this is like in the book, this is the final model that, that they do, right, which is, you know, we look at the effects of eligibility and, you know, there's really no effect for the rule here. Um, so this is, you know, as close as we can get, I guess, to, to having some kind of like causal inference, kind of, you know, similar to the um, instrumental variable, but that's as far as I got. Um, so yeah, this was a tough one, man. I, I, I really struggled this week. And yeah, actually, I, mean, I kind of kind of really glossed over the, I, you know, the variation within a between groups thing, because I feel like that really should be in another book about group level things. Uh, the last part of this chapter was kind of interesting to me, just like the discussion about causes of effects and effects of causes. That's kind of an interesting discussion, right? Yeah. So what we usually are doing here is we're looking for the effects of, at the effects of causes. What people really want is what people kind of colloquially, colloquially want is like, what's the cause of this effect, right? You know, what causes lung cancer? Well, right. lots of things, but one, we do know that smoking is an effect that does cause, seem to cause lung cancer, for example, but it's not the only thing. Right. Um, so it's kind of interesting. And then at least this thing you were saying, what was that book you showed the other day? Uh, oh, getting, th uh, making things happen. Making things happen. So it kind of gets into that discussion about, you know, you know, A causes B causes C causes the infinite regression of causes. You really can't actually answer that question in any kind of sensible way, perhaps. Right. But did you get the book, by the way? No. I'm just saying here in this book, I oh, I, I, see. I yeah. do met, I did meant to get that book. Um, I'm sorry, what was it called? Yeah, I gotta write this down. Making things happen by um, I think it's James uh, uh, Woodward, I think, or someone named Woodward. I think it's Woodward or something. Like yeah, yeah. Did you read? They it? They also have a whole. They have a whole section on this, like using like uh, varying like intercepts, like doing fixed effects, fixed effects models. I was yeah. just like, man, when I saw that, it broke me. I was like, I, I can barely understand the first part of this dang chapter. I know. Time. That's what I just, that's what I was saying. I, that part, I kind of just kind of skimmed over really quickly because I'm like, I've got, I'm full. <laughs> well, my, my brain is full. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need any <laughs> dessert. I don't need anything else. Yeah. No, <laughs> Take that menu away. But the very last action is this causes of effects, effects of causes, which I did think was kind of interesting. Um, yeah. So there, is actually, there is actually one section where he goes, what does this mean for statistical practices? It's like, well, yeah. um, it's not, there's not a whole lot on that. It's just like the last you know paragraph of the chapter. But yeah, this was a, a, a deep one. So yeah, I'll, I'll have to find um, the book. Hold on, let me actually. Interesting. Um, what did I order? <laughs> what did I order? Yeah, I, I was going to show it, try to show it to you, but uh, since we got some time, but, um, so yeah, next week's it, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll yeah, just post it. Book, but yeah, it's just a lot, right? It's, it's um, it is a lot. Well, the last chapter, um, is really just, again, you know, Hey, here's some like teasers. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, these are stuff on uh, stuff that is going to come someday, maybe in this uh, in another book, but um, yeah. that hasn't been. Oh, you can go back to his older book, but um, 
you know, so I think we're just going to kind of breeze through this next week and we're going to celebrate making it through this book. Um, and call it good. Yeah. I think we did a really good job going through this book, to tell you the truth, in, uh, in my opinion. Also, yeah. It's a nice short chapter, so it should be fine. So I'll cover that next week and then we'll call it good, I think. Now, this book you just sent, it's our book. It's actually, a, you know, the standard like CRC, our book, right? It, it's, not, it's not one that's available online, though. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I know that's kind of a thing that we want. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if it is online. I don't, I, it's a good question. Sometimes you can like, sometimes even if there isn't like an official one, there might be like a GitHub repository. Yeah, or yeah, like there is for some, I mean, official, well, they are official GitHub repositories, but they're not like, the actual full text of the book, but there's something you can Oh, here's, a, here's, a, here's an interesting thing I just found. Check this out. So this is just like a GitHub repository of a bunch of books about, about this. And it looks like there actually is, no, wait a minute, hold on. No, never mind. Well, we can look, for, yeah, you yeah. know, might be some good gems there. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, All right, man, well, hey. Um, we should get going. Um, Appreciate yeah. you trudging through that really difficult chapter. I'm glad I didn't have to. <laughs> I wish I had more for you, but it was. No, yeah, that's just, more than enough. I, I think the problem is, is yeah, the, the whole counterfactual thing gets really tricky. Yeah. You know, so. Um, so I'm glad, I mean, in some sense, I'm, I'm glad I'm not actually using that. I'm not doing that kind of work. So I don't have to worry about that much. Well, actually, it's something I, you know, because I have done a lot of observational research, which is, you know, just taking what you have and kind of doing what you can with it. I really need to actually, I, I really, I really put that on a t-shirt, taking what you have and doing what you can with it. <laughs> well, it's like, it's, it's like, cause you're not, you can't randomly assign anything. You know what That's I mean? Funny. Well, yeah. Take what you have and do what you can with it. I like that. That's well, fantastic. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to send that off the cuff. But I guess in the end, it's kind of what it is, right? It's, yeah. yeah, it's another way of saying it. it is what it is. What are you going to do? It is what it is. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, I think it's like, you know, if you can implement some of these, these things and, and, you know, and it's like, it, it can definitely get you closer to, a, you know, a stronger inference, you know, perhaps, I, I guess. I haven't really done it, though, in like a, um, in a, like, real data setting yet so i probably need to yeah. get into that but anyway next week my friends yeah and, thank you very much see you next yes. week last, last oh, week. I, gotta tape, I gotta tape end or stop oh yeah stop yeah or is it stop